Hello and welcome to chapter five, section two. This should be in volume one of your textbook series. This is on absolute value we're gonna be talking about today and it starts on textbook page 355 and goes through textbook page 358. You're gonna need the common things that you always need. Colored pencils, a regular pencil for your on your own that you need to be correcting after you've paused the video. You also need your math textbook, your thinking brain, and right along with your listening ears, now in the top right corner, you can see a pair of headphones because I think that you really could benefit from having those headphones on so that you can focus on your lesson completely and away from distractions. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So now on textbook page 355, you can see the young man here holding the bags of groceries. Super excited about that. Super, super excited. So now at the top, it's going to say, scan the lesson, predict two things you will learn about absolute value. So two of the things that I came up with were really the textbook, if we're just being serious here. Uh, the two things in the textbook say how to represent absolute value on a number line. That's one thing we're going to learn. And how to write the absolute value of a number. So now we're gonna look at the vocabulary startup. This is very important. It says the distance between a number and zero on the number line is called its absolute value. So, and this is gonna be discussed later in this section, but distance can never be negative. You can't travel negative miles. You can travel miles in the other direction, but it can never be negative. So that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about absolute value. Number one says each mark on the number line indicates one yard. Draw a tree three yards west of the house. So that's what we're gonna do. So the hop, hop, hop that I just showed you and then I erased, that's how we got there. So, and actually you may not have seen the hop, 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 but if you did, um, I was just trying to show you that we've got one, two, and three. So that's our three yards, what I just drew there with the green line. Then you're gonna go ahead and draw a tree. And remember, we had to start at the house. The house in this example is going to be zero, really. And so now I drew a tree, not my best tree ever. So there's my best tree ever. Whoops, let's go back. Okay, there was my best tree ever. And then it also asks you to now draw a mailbox three yards east of the house. So again, we're gonna go and we're gonna look for our house, that's right there. And then we're going to go one, two, three. That's three yards east. <laughs> so now we drew a mailbox. It says the distance between the house and the tree is blank the distance between the house and the mailbox. So that distance, since they're both three yards, is gonna be equal to. So now it says the tree and the mailbox are in blank directions from the house. So really they're gonna be in opposite directions. So you wanna go ahead and write opposite. All right, number four now says, how does the number line above help you to understand absolute value? So I think what they were getting at was the house is at zero, so you wanna write that. All right, so now it says, how does the number line above help you to understand absolute value? I know I just said that, but it says the house is zero on the number line. The tree and mailbox are the same distance from the house in different directions. So that's basically how you're going to understand absolute value. Under the real world link, it says errands. Jesse leaves home and walks four blocks west to the grocery store. So we've got four blocks west um, to buy milk, then returns home. He then walks another four blocks east to the post office. Compare the distance and the dis I'm sorry, compare the distance and the direction of Jesse's house and the post office from the grocery store. Okay, so what you want to write is that they are both four blocks from the store in opposite directions. Now she, you should be looking at textbook page 356. So it says find opposites. Now it says positive numbers such as two are graphed to the right or above zero on a number line. So when they say above, they are talking about if there is a, I'm gonna go ahead and draw one right off to the side here. So when they're talking about above, all right, so when they're talking about above, you wanna notice that number lines can either go from right to left or they can also go up and down. That's horizontal and vertical. We talked about that in the last video. So what they mean, and you wanna start underlining and using your colored pencils here, positive numbers, you should put a box around or underline it, are graphed to the right or above zero on a number line. Negative numbers, so negative numbers, such as negative two, are graphed to the left or below zero on a number line. Opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero in opposite directions. Since zero is not negative nor positive, that's important, you wanna make sure you underline that, negative nor positive, zero is its own opposite. The opposite of the opposite of a number is the number itself. That's a lot to take in. For example, the opposite, let's go ahead and use a different color here. Um, for example, the opposite of the opposite of three, so the opposite which is negative of the opposite of three 
is actually three. And this is where that terminology or that phrase double negative comes from. Because when you have two negatives, it actually crosses out. They cross each other out. They cancel each other out. So that's why you get just three. So it says negative two, whoops. It says negative two is two units to the left of zero. So here's zero, one, two. So that's negative two. And then positive two, one, two, is two units to the right of zero. So that's gonna be a positive two. And I know this concept of the opposite of the opposite is kind of crazy. So if you just think of it like this in your brain, you just want to hear, we'll go ahead and write an example. If you have the opposite, which is a negative, of the opposite of six, then it would just be six, okay? So you can even think of it in terms of like on, off, or up and down. So go ahead and write the example that I've given you here. And I don't want you to make a mistake and think that this is one at the end. What I've written is the opposite of the opposite of on. That's like on, is in on off. So I'm gonna show you what that means. I'm gonna first write the word on. So this is what we're talking about right here, on. Now I'm gonna take it piece by piece and I'm gonna check it off so you can see what I mean. The opposite, so if it's the opposite of on, we have off, right? So the opposite of the opposite, so let's do it again. The opposite, so now we have on again, of on is on. So I know this probably looks a little crazy, but I'm saying when we, we started with on, the opposite of on is off, and we need the opposite of off because that was the opposite of on. Crazy. Okay, so hopefully your head isn't all crazy by now because the concept really isn't hard. This one says, number one says, find the opposite of negative five. So if you look on your graph here, you will see that negative five can be found right here. And the opposite is going to be on the other side which is five, okay? So the opposite, so five is the opposite of negative five, okay? So when it asks you for that, you would give me an answer of five. Method two says use symbols to, um, use symbols. The integer negative five uses the negative symbol. The opposite of a negative symbol is a positive symbol. So the opposite of negative five is positive five or five. So you could represent that as five or positive five. Either are fine. E either one of those is fine. So now it says to find the opposite of four. So now we're going to first start by plotting four. So you can see that four is right here. Remember, this is positive four. And now we need to find the opposite of four. So the opposite, of course, would be on this other end, and that would be negative four. So the opposite of four is negative four. So now you want to try. What's the opposite of three? Well, the opposite of three would just be negative three. And we can prove that by, all right, so you can prove that the opposite of three um, is negative three by plotting it on a number line. So here I've listed two number lines. So for the first one, we're going to plot the three because it's asking you for the opposite of three. So the original number will be in blue. And so then that is going to be one, two, three spaces from zero. So then when you go three spaces from zero in the opposite direction, you land on negative three. So that's how you would see three and negative three. And it's the same for the vertical number line. I just wanted to make sure that you are getting used to seeing the vertical number line as well. So three and negative three there. So now you wanna go ahead and do, what is the opposite of the opposite of negative two? So you do wanna insert, or I'm sorry, draw a number line. I'm going to insert them here. All right, so this is one of those double negative situations. So first you wanna look at what the number is that they gave you. So they gave you negative two, okay? So we're gonna start here on negative two. Now when it says what's the opposite of the opposite, I want you to watch carefully. The opposite, remember, of negative two, you've got two spaces here, and then you've got two spaces here. So this would be the actual opposite. So you wanna label that with opposite. Okay, sorry, that's my dog in the background. And th but what it says is, so now in pink, I'm gonna actually underline or put a box or circle around opposite because that's the steps, those are the steps that I've taken to get to the opposite of negative two. But now it says, what is the opposite of the opposite of negative two? So now what it's saying is, what is the opposite of two, really? That's what it's actually asking you. What is the opposite of two? Because remember, the opposite of the opposite is two. So now we're gonna go back in the other direction again. I'm gonna use a different color now. So we covered the first opposite here, and now we want the opposite of that number. So we go back two spaces here, and then one more, we're gonna go back two spaces here. 
So as you can see, you end up right back at negative two. So your answer for this problem is going to be negative two. All right, now you should be looking at textbook page 357. At the top of the textbook page, it talks about absolute value. So for absolute value, it says the absolute value of a number is the distance between the number and zero on a number line. So distance between the number and zero on a number line. That was already defined once, but we just wanna make sure that you got that. And in the model, it says the absolute value of four is four, and the absolute value of negative four is also four. And that's because they're both the same distance from zero. So you've got four units here, and you've got four units here. They're just in different directions. The absolute value, the words absolute value are actually um, shown by having these bars around them, okay? So you wanna make a little note that these bars mean absolute value and you actually say it like that. What's the absolute value of negative four? So it says the integers negative four and four are four units from zero, even though, are, even though they are on opposite sides of zero. The absolute value of negative four, this is very important, so you wanna underline or put a circle around this, is read absolute value of negative four, just the way I said it. But you wanna make sure that you've circled that so that you know how to say it. So now this is that point that I made earlier in the video. It says, since distance cannot be negative, okay, so distance cannot be negative, the absolute value of a number is always positive or zero. That's a big statement, okay? Always positive or zero. Very important, you wanna make a note of that. All right, so now you're gonna look at, evaluate the absolute value of negative seven. So what they're really asking you in this question is, how far away from zero is negative seven? So as you can tell, it's gonna be seven units. So you see that seven units there because you're going from zero to negative seven, plot your point there. So the absolute value of negative seven is going to be seven. For the next one, now we immediately jump into more difficult or challenging problems. So for this one, we have the absolute value of five. I want you to rewrite the problem off to the side. Okay, so if you're using colored pencils, which you should be, I want you to rewrite the problem as I've shown you here. And I also do not want you to use the way that the book has it when they work from left to right. So you can actually scratch that out. I'm perfectly fine with that. So I just want you <coughs> to have written the problem like this. Now, when you're working with absolute um, value numbers and they're put into an expression or an equation, you wanna make sure that you treat them just as you would when you're substituting numbers for a variable. So what I mean by that is I'm now gonna rewrite this number sentence. So we've got the absolute value of five. So in my head, I'm gonna say, okay, the absolute value of five is five, plus now I have the absolute value of negative six. Well, remember, the absolute value of negative six is just going to be six. So now five plus six will give me 11, and I will put a box around my 11. I do want you to work in that V pattern that I taught you how to use way back when we were doing expressions. So let's go ahead and look at number five. Now, because number five in the book is set up this way, you can go ahead and scratch it out right there. Off to the side, I just want you to rewrite the problem. So you should have the absolute value of negative seven minus three. So just like I told you before, you wanna first treat this as something that you have to process, just like we did with equations. So working below, you wanna say the absolute value of negative seven is seven minus the absolute value of three is three. Now a common misconception is that you're gonna take the opposite of three and make it negative three. That's not what you're doing. The absolute value basically just takes away any negative sign within the bars. Okay, so seven minus three would then leave you with four. So your answer is gonna be four and you would put a box around that. Now you can do these problems to find out. Go ahead and pause the video now. Nope, really pause it. And then you can do C, D, and E. All right, so now under the first got it, you have the absolute value of 14. Okay, so the absolute value of 14 is simply going to be 14. So on the line here for C, you should write where it says C, 14. The next problem says the absolute value of nine plus the absolute value of three. I do want you to rewrite this problem. You can do it just below the problem if you have a room. So it will look something like this. And now you need to work down just like you were with the equation. So the absolute value of negative nine is gonna be nine plus the absolute value of three, which is three. So nine plus three is going to give you nine, 10, 11, 12. So your final answer here for D should be 12. Going on to the next one, we have the absolute value of negative eight minus the absolute value of negative two. So for this one, you again want to make sure that you write the original problem. So this sounds a lot like expressions. And on your first line here, you're going to translate what the absolute value of eight is. 
the absolute value of negative eight, I'm sorry, I keep saying eight. The absolute value of negative eight is eight minus the absolute value of negative two is two. So now you have the problem or you're left with the equation eight minus two, which gives you six. So you wanna make sure that you've corrected any of the work that you did incorrectly and you wanna fix that now. Now you should be looking at textbook page 358 where you see the seagull. It says a seagull is flying 25 feet above sea level. Um, Navia is diving 15 feet below sea level. What is the distance between Navia and the seagull? So for these, you can actually draw a little, um, you can draw an example, okay? So like a diagram. So you could draw the seagull, which is gonna be up here, and that's my seagull, that's right, and he's 25 feet above sea level. Then we're gonna make sea level, just to make it fun. So this is gonna be my sea right here, mm -hmm, that's my ocean, and we're gonna call that sea level, which would also be the number known as zero, okay? So you wanna even label that with sea level, yay, that's zero. And then it says um, Nivea is diving 15 feet below sea level. So now we're gonna to have to have our diver down here. I'm pretty impressed with my drawing here, even though it looks sort of like a turtle. If you look really hard, it looks like a scuba diver with a tank on his back. So now we've got the number 15 down here because we're 15 feet below sea level. So now when it, <coughs> we've got, and he's actually negative 15. So you can even add that negative sign. So now that translates into the, the following expression. You've got the absolute value of 25 plus the absolute value of negative 15. And then you wanna work through that. So that's 25 feet from here to here. So watch where I'm pointing, 25 feet. So that's a total of 25 feet. Then you've got another 15 feet here. Okay, so it's plus 15. So now when you add them together, 25 plus 15 is going to give me a total of 40 feet. And if you add the 25 from here and the 15 from here, you get a total distance of 40 feet. So that is your final answer here. And your homework for this evening is just going to be to work on textbook page 358, numbers 1 through 6. This homework should be able to be done in a jiffy. And my last little meme here for you says absolute values won't put up with negativity. Put any value but zero behind bars and the result will always be absolutely positive. So hopefully you can choose to remember that when you're working on absolute value.